Hi everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. In this video, we are going to take a look at our signaling server, which is written by JavaScript and Node.js framework. So all you have to do is go to my GitHub repository, which I'll put the link inside the description section below. And then uh, you have to open your terminal and simply just write npm install. That's it. You will get the uh, node modules and you're ready to start the server. Simply go to the package.json and you know press this play button or run button and you'll have your server up and running just like this. Okay, so let's take a look at our index.js which is our only JavaScript file and responsible for managing our server. So what we have here is uh, we are importing HTTP socket from WebSocket server and create a server and then start it on port 4000. And then using socket object, we will create a WebSocket object and pass the HTTP server as a config. So what we have in this source is actually we do have two empty arrays at the beginning. One of them stands for the rooms objects and then the users will handle all of the users on the server. So it's just a concept of the database. So all of the data goes here. And what we do is actually when a user creates a room, we will put it inside this array. And when a user joins the WebSocket server, it will be stored inside this user array. So all of our code is basically, you know, create a room, join a room, leave chat room, and then uh, join users, leave users, and send, send you know, the data to the other users inside a room. So each room has a reference of the users of the room. So to connect between one user and other users inside the chat room, we have to broadcast some signals to other users. So each room has a reference of some specific users that are within that room. So let's not confuse you and move further and look what we have here. Our signaling types are here. These signaling types are using to separate the signals that are derived to the server or being sent to the clients. So using these signals, we will decide what to do at the moment. So let's go down below and using request callback, we will accept the request and have the connection. And each connection is now available to, you know, receive a message or get the message through our web sockets. So what we have right now, we will extract the data from the message. Uh, that UTF-8 data will have our message that each time a message is being derived from the client and we will have a function actually we do have a function find user it will iterate through our users array using this derived username and check if the current user exists inside the users array it will return for us so first we will find our user and then checking the type of the signal we will decide what to do. So every time a user connects to the WebSocket server, it has to send a signal that, hey, I want to store my username inside the user's array. So the signaling type is going to be store user. And first we will check if the user is found and it's not null, then we wanna tell him that, hey, you are already inside our users list. So return and do nothing. And then next, if it doesn't, if it doesn't exist and we didn't return, we simply want to, you know, create a new user object, which is going to be like this with the name of the data that's name that user is sending to us, the client is sending to the server and the connection, which is this object that up here, we just accepted this one. So the connection goes there and it will be stored inside our users array. And then we do have a general function, which uh, we actually have two general functions that sends the state of the rooms to the user or sends the state 
of the rooms to all users all of the users at the moment which is here so in this update rooms for users we will iterate through all of the users and send them the room details you will take a look at it in a second and down here if we want to update it for one user we simply just send this to the user and uh, yeah the connection is going to be here and the data is going to be uh, with the type of room status and then the data is going to be get details so before taking a look at this function that gives us the states of rooms we have to check at this function sends data to user it's just a simple function that gets the connection and just stringifies the data and send it to the connection so all i did is was just you know prevent to uh, boilerplate this code you know write json that stringify all, all the places so let's go back up here and take a look at the get room details so all it does it maps the room objects we don't want you know the extra stuff from it we just want the room name and the length of the members you know this members is actually the user's array of the room object so let's not get confused and go back to the signals and the next signal is actually when a user wants to create a room send this one so we will call the create chat room function and check here we will try to find the room first you know if there is a room which with the same room name we want to send if if it's true if we have this, the room like this we want to return we don't we cannot you know create this room if it doesn't if this room doesn't exist then we want to user to leave from all the chat rooms so all of that this function do is iterates through all of the rooms and then iterates through all of its room members you know you will see each room will have a room object using for each and for this one we will iterate through all of the members of this single room and check if the username is the same as this one that we are requiring we want to call a leave chat room so all of that this function does is simply just remove that user object from the user array of the room and then update room status for the users so that's how create chat room works so we will you know make the user leave all the chat rooms and then create a room object which we will like this room name owner and the members which has the current creator of the chat room inside it and then update it for you know all of the other users that hey there's a new room being created so if someone wants to join that room we will you know call the join chat room function so as usual we will you know just leave that username from the previous chat rooms using that previous function and then uh, we will try to find the state of the chat room if it doesn't exist we want to return we cannot you know put in new user inside that room and then we will check if this user that is trying to join this chat room already exists we don't want to do anything then return and if it doesn't we want to send joining new session to the other room members we will take a look at what we are doing here but for now let's take a look at how we store this new user inside the members array so all we do you know we get the reference of the members of the room that exist we are sure that this room exists and push a new object like this username and its connection and then update you know room status for all users so let's take a look at this send joining new session to other room members here so all it does it's going to you know broadcast some data that hey there's a new session you have to send you know the start new session to this new user that is being joined there's one very important point here we actually call this function which is you know sending this data this signal to the all clients uh, before we add the new user 
So it means it's kind of broadcast implementation. So if we push the new user, which is the joining user to the uh, room members first and then call this function. So we have the new user inside this members object and he will receive this new session and he's going to start, you know, the new connection with himself. So we have to, you know, first broadcast the message to all of the other users and then put the new user inside the rooms members array. So that's our joining chats room function. And we have the leave room function, which are going to find the chat room and check if room exists. We are going to iterate through our members of the room and then splice or drop one user out of it and then update. Pretty straightforward and leave all the rooms are actually pretty much like the others. So we'll iterate through all the chat rooms and leave the chat room, the function that we had before. So like this. And these are signals for our, you know, storing our user and create a chat room, join and leave. So it goes like this. A new user, you know, creates a chat room. So he's alone inside his chat room, inside his, you know, signaling chat room. And a new user joins that room. So there are actually two members on that chat room. And as soon as a user joins that chat room, he will send a signal named new session, something like that. Hey, yeah, new session. It means that, hey, there is a new guy. We have to start call with that new guy. So everyone who receives that signal will, you know, send a signal with the name of start call. So all of the users will start to call with that new session guy. So imagine person A is joining to the chat room and person B tries to reach him out. So person B sends a start call to the person A and here we will receive the user to call here. So uh, using this target, which is person A. So person B has sent this and data the target is person a and we will try to find user a so this one here is person a and send this signal to the person a so if person a receives start call it's going to send back an offer and person a sends offer to the person b so right here we have the person b and then person b receives the offer and tries to return an answer so person B returns answer to person A and then they exchange the session description just simple as that. And in between, they are, you know, sending the eyes candidate to each other. All we have here is just, you know, managing our room members and our users and also our rooms. So we have some signals for creating, joining, leaving and you know, stuff like that for room management and users of the room management. And then we have the call section, which is, you know, four simple signals. Start call, offer, answer, and ice candidates. So that's pretty much it. I don't want to, you know, get you more confused with this. You'll understand if, you know, take a look at what's going on here. If you have, you know, some basic coding sprints you will know what's going on here it's not a big project it's just a signaling server that exchanges some data between some clients so let's go to the next part which is creating our android source and then start from scratch and you know managing our creating room and signaling and other stuff so till the next video see you everyone and thanks for watching